Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video and in this video we're going to be trying to fix this Nintendo 3DS XL in very fetching pink and this video is sponsored by no other than the My Mate Vince Massive, yes the most exclusive group in the world and we have three members now, believe it or not. So we've got Saturnine Cinema, he was the original one, Robert Hughes came in second and now we have a third member, Operational 117. So massive thanks to you three and also all my other patrons for sponsoring videos like these trying to fix videos. So the more the merrier, the more trying to fix videos we make, everybody's happy. So now with this one here, I bought it for the princely sum of £20. And of course it's eBay, and of course I'm pretty sure already that I have been ripped off. So it was, uh, I wouldn't say a business seller, but it was somebody who was selling loads of them. In fact, you can see here in the brackets 10. So obviously it means that there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine beforehand, and however many of them are afterwards. So obviously if they've got that many of them, they're gonna know their way around them. Yes, they might not be into micro soldering and stuff, so hopefully it might make a nice repair, or I could have been completely and utterly ripped off, because when I open it up here, I can see there's some sort of horrible damage going on over here. Could well be water damage, not too sure. As well as that, look at the charging port here, and you can already see that that definitely isn't right there. The pins are nearly touching, and also there doesn't seem to be any structure to it at all. Already, this thing is probably uneconomical to repair, but we don't care too much about that. It's more about whether or not it's going to make an interesting video and whether people, including myself, can learn from it. So if you haven't watched my videos before, remember this is a trying to fix. There's a very strong chance I'm not going to be able to fix this. In my instance, I don't think I've taken apart, and I don't think I've had a Nintendo 3DS XL on this channel before. So this will be my first time in here. I'm quite excited. It's a mystery to see what it is. At least we know it's not just going to be a boring battery replaced. There's definitely going to be something more interesting in there somewhere. So let's crack it open and see what's uh, happening. Also, let me plug in. Well, I'll tell you what, let's rearrange these pins, plug in a charger, and let's see if we can get any life into it whatsoever. Let's get started. Right, let's have a little rearrange of these pins here. I didn't re read what the eBay listing said. All it said is, will not power on. There was and just for spares and repair. Yeah, this d definitely isn't right. It shouldn't just be loose pins like this. Right, let me get the charger and let's see whether or not, obviously it doesn't come with a charger, this is my own charger because I've got a 3DS XL but I've got the new version so it's, uh, it's different. Right, that's gone in there, oh and we got a light, now the light's gone out. No, light's gone out. And it's not turning on. So, I'm not moving that charger. In fact, let's, let's hold the charger in the same position. So I'm not moving my hand and it's just going out. So I suppose that either means the battery's full or it's not accepting a charge. And also it's not turning on. Okay, well at least we can mess around with the charging port now, which is good anyway. All right, let's take it apart. Let's see if we've got any power in the battery at all. Oh, this is disgusting. Oh, this has had water damage, hasn't it? There's a hair in here as well. Cat hair or dog hair. Oh, this is, uh, this is grim. Just gonna smell it. Hmm. Just gonna wear some gloves. Kind of reminds me of urine a bit. <coughs> right, okay. Uh, how do we take this apart further? We've got little screws in. Tiny little screws in here. Oh, there's no battery in here. It's a bit, bit naughty, really, isn't it? There's no battery in here. Uh, well, that's the reason I suppose it's not turning on. Would it turn on without a battery? Uh, I suppose I need to get a battery, really, don't I? I wonder if the one from the 3DS XL would fit it or not. Let me check it out. Right, same battery, apparently. Let's 
see if the charger is going to stay now. Regardless, it needs a new charge port. Let's just see what happens now. All right, so we've got the light on. Still got the light on. Yeah, still have the light on. Right, okay. Let's uh, turn it on and see what it does. Blue light. Is it going to go further than that? Yes, it is. Have we got volume? Right, so we've got no volume. Okay, well look, the screen itself is okay, which is a bonus. There's horrible markings up here. Uh, and the whole thing is disgustingly dirty and looks like urine stains. But, it, yeah, it looks like at this moment in time we need a new battery and we need a charge port and also we need to fix the volume. Does the 3DS thing work here? Yes, the 3D, yeah. It does work. Well, okay, uh, obviously I don't know about the buttons and stuff like that. Yeah, it might be all right. Okay, let's take it apart anyway and see what's happening with this uh, volume and give everything a really good clean and see what it looks like on the inside. Yes, yeah, so there's definitely evidence of some kind of liquid damage here and we already know that from the mess on the back here. But the actual board itself, apart from having some cat hairs or dog hairs over in this corner, I think it looks okay. Well, I suppose we'll, uh, should we strip it down further? Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that corrosion there. Yeah, nice lump there and there, so that's gonna need cleaning. Yeah, I think we are gonna have to strip this all down, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, it needs a clean anyway. I think all, that's all the uh, ribbon cables undone now, so let's undo it all and we can have a look on the other side, see what it's like. Oh, this is the volume control here. Let's see if there's any corrosion on the actual cable itself. No, there's not. No, that's nice and clean. So it might be just the, uh, the switch that just needs cleaning. Oh no, there you go, look, it's not engaging. Can you see that little plastic thing in there? That needs to be there. Yeah, okay. Hmm, I'm gonna have to try and force that over. I wonder is that broken? I'll give it a clean up and uh, I might be able to kind of put a little packing piece in over here to push it over more. I reckon once it's all cleaned up, it will work okay. Right, so this looks like it's been held. It's been held in place over this side, up the top here. Wonder if there's corrosion on this one as well. Yeah, I oh, know. There's not nice to one underneath it. Yeah, that one is. That one's okay. Right, so this is it. So yeah, the screen has got a little bit of water damage up here, but it's still working. So I think it's probably best just to just to leave it. 
we could, I suppose we could take off these ones here and have a little look up there and see what's happening. Right, well this side of the board, oh we've got a good bit of rust down here. Yeah, it's really eating into the board. Let's have a look close. Right, so let's move over. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's certainly going through different traces, isn't it? Like, for example, this track here. I wonder if, is that still going to be intact? Also, where does these go to? Over here, maybe? Is that still going to be in track? That looks really deep. I think what would actually, maybe not, it might be just surface. Let's get the IPA, isopropyl alcohol. Let's give everything a really, really good clean. Okay, this is what I'm using. that's it cleaned up so I'm going to use my multimeter now set to continuity so it beeps and let's go across the traces through this rust line here it looks much better than it did but it's still visible just down here so let's go through them and let's see if any of them are faulty and if they are we'll have to run some jumper wires across them so I'm going to zoom right in the first one to check is this one here so here to here yeah so it's definitely going through that one now we've got a massive one here I'm worried about this one so we've got one contact here Let's see now where it goes off to here. This is the first one. Excellent. Got continuity there. Right, let's go back. Down. Next thing we have to look at is this one here. So that goes across, across to here. Yep, we've still got that. Via. Down, down, down. Okay, it kind of disappears now, but that's going to go off to this chip here. I don't think we need to worry about the rest, really. Yeah, okay, so I've been lucky with that. So what do we have to do now? We have to clean up this set. I'm gonna take apart this top one here just to see if I can, uh, just to see if there's any damage or anything around the edges here. And then we just have to give all of this a real good clean up. Something like this can actually be put in the sink to clean up. Uh, this one can't because of these these button contacts. So I suppose I could take them apart. With this, I'm just gonna clean with uh, IPA and uh, a cloth. So yeah, I think we might be. I think we might be lucky on this one. Oh, this is horribly sticky. Look at that. Let's put the gloves back on. I had uh, the doorbell rang. Where did I put my gloves? So sorry. I just noticed my camera went off, and after I got my gloves, I didn't hit record. Apologies. So what I've done is I've taken off the back cover here, and sure enough, there's water damage everywhere here as well. As well as that, if you look at the actual screen, it's got. Not only the mark down here, which I knew would be water damage, but I thought this kind of fingerprint mark here was on the just dirt, but it's not. It's actually in the screen itself. So I'm having to, I didn't want to, but I'm having to dismantle it more because I actually want to get to the screen to see if I can, if there's any way that I can clean that up. Right, so here's the, uh, here's the screen here. Ideally, what I'd like to do is to be able to take off this front digitizer now it looks like the ribbon cables come out this side, so I'm hoping I'm okay to lift it from here. There we go. Oh, is this just, no, this is just a lens here, isn't it? Oh, excellent, this is just a lens. So there you go, I can clean up those horrible watermarks now. So now I can, I think I can clean that. Yeah, I can. Oh, might even be able to clean down here as well. Oh, that would be amazing. I wonder if it's just all on this layer or whether it's on the layers underneath. This thing is absolutely filthy. I think, I don't think it's ever really gonna be clean, clean. Uh, I decided to take the, the buttons off this one here because it is just so, uh, so bad. And I am now gonna wash that, 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 that. The, uh, everything that's basically plastic and rubber is now gonna go straight into the sink.
Now, that's certainly much, much cleaner. I don't mind working on this now. So, what we are going to do is, I've ordered up a battery, I've ordered up a charge port, so they're gonna take quite a while to arrive. So, in the meantime, I'm gonna see if I can fix up this cable that goes to the, yeah, this one here. So, I've cleaned it. This is the one that goes to the camera. I'm gonna zoom right in. Unfortunately, there's two traces that are missing. So, I think I'm gonna get a fiberglass pen rub it back to try and expose some of the copper on the actual ribbon cable part here and then I need to run tiny little jumpers from the ribbon cable to the actual connections at the end. And, well that's the plan, that's easier said than done. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've just cleaned it up with the brush and IPA and given it a little scrape and can you see that uh, we've got one missing here and also the one next to it here is also missing. This one I don't actually think is missing, I think that's just discolored, but I might try to scrape back a bit of the ribbon cable just here, just to make sure I have got continuity between these two and this big track here. But I definitely have to run a wire from here to here and also here to here. It's gonna be really, it's gonna be very hard to do. Because remember, this actually goes into a ribbon cable connector. But I'll give it a go, if it doesn't work out, then I will be able to buy these on eBay, but let's try and fix it if we can. So I've got the fiberglass pen and I'm just gonna gently rub across this area here to try to expose some of the ribbon cable. So you can see now that it's been rubbed away from here. So let's go to here. Let's see if we got continuity. Excellent, so we have got continuity there. So it's just discolored. And that one there, great. Yep, definitely. But obviously nothing here, because you can see it's physically missing, and nothing on this one, because it's missing. But then we're back to being okay again. Yeah, so these are the two I need to concentrate on. So I'm gonna get my solder line heated up, and I think this time, I've got some old liquid flux from ages ago. I think I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid flux just to see if that's gonna work better on here. It might allow me to see more. And I'm gonna be putting a bit of solder on here and here and here and here and trying to run a wire. Now, when I put solder on here and here, it probably will go on to all the others as well. So I'm gonna get some captain tape and just try to mark off a bit of a section. And here it goes. Now I have to remind you that this thing is tiny. So it looks easy on the screen because you can't see my fingers on it. So you've got no scale about how small it is, but it's tiny. I mean, if you look at one of the buttons there, you can see how small it is. Yeah. So all the connections on here are about the same size as the button. And I don't know how many connections there are, but it's a lot. Well, I, uh, I haven't used one of these pens since the very beginning of these trying to fix videos and everybody told me to get the other flux, but I just want to try it on here just to see if it's going to be easier to touch up these tiny connections. Right, tips nice and clean. Let's try to add a tiny little bit on here now. Okay, right, I've got a little bit there, and a little bit down here as well. And they're not bridged, let me try and get a bit more up here. There we go. Now, let's see what wire we can use on that. So normally I go for 0 0.1 millimeter, which is one tenth of a millimeter, but sometimes that can be a bit big. So, Anonymous Repair, which is another YouTuber, check out his channel if you don't, I've mentioned him before so you might already know about him, but to me he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a legend, a legend of repair. So he told me to get even smaller than that. So this is 0 0.1, which, oh, I might get away with, not too sure. But I also bought up some of this and I haven't used it yet. This is 0 0.02 two of a millimeter. So you would get 50 of these wires in one millimeter. And we all know how small one millimeter is because there's 10 of them in a centimeter. 
So what I might do is I might try to start off on this 0.1 millimeter wire, but I may have to go over to may have to go to the other one for the one next to it. Let's try this one to begin with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be scraping the enamel off that because this is enameled wire. So I'm just using a little blade to get rid of the enamel from the wire. I'm just going to try to tin up the actual wire itself. Right, that's that bit done. Let's try to get the bottom bit on. Oh, that's done it. Let's get the blade now. I think, I think that's on. I can't really see before the sh reflection of the flux whether or not uh, whether or not it's gone on to the next one. In fact, I can't even see any solder now on this one here. There we go. What's happened is that it's lost its stickiness now, the captain tape, because the flux has just gone under there. So although that went on really nice, I'm right-handed, and then when I tried to put on the left-hand side, of course, the iron hit against the one that I just did and then knock that one off. So I had to start again, this time starting on the left hand side and then do the right hand side afterwards. Now, if I had half a brain while editing, I realized I should have just flipped the board around. The problem is when you're doing these sort of repairs is half of you's thinking about the camera and getting things in shot rather than fully focusing on the repair. So what is obvious afterwards <laughs> isn't always obvious when you're doing it. But look, eventually I got there and I'm happy with the results. So now let's pick up the video when I'm pleased with myself that they both went on nicely. Unbelievable. That actually went better than I thought it could possibly go. So what I'm going to do is I won't be able to test the connection up the top here for continuity because it would involve more scraping. But I can go from the pads at the bottom and check for continuity. So if I was to go from, for example, here, and we've got it going to here, and now here and here. Amazing. And are we crossed? No, we're not. No, we're not. We haven't got a short. Is this one still okay? Unbelievable. Yeah, amazing. Wow, honestly, I'm so proud of myself because look how small that is. That is amazing. This is the smallest tip on the iron I've got and you can still see how big it is in relation to that. Look at the shakes. <laughs> oh yes, brilliant. Right, what I'm gonna do is, I won't be able to test if it's actually working or not. I'm gonna cover it in solder mask and I'm still hoping that this is still gonna be able to get into the uh, connection. The ribbon cable connection because I've got this quite far back. What I am also wondering is, actually I should probably do that now, when we look at the connection up here can you see that we've got bad pins so maybe I should put a tiny bit of flux on and just try to add a little bit of solder to those pins. They might be completely eroded away or I might be able to get solder onto them. I think we should do that now and then put solder mask on that. So again just because I've got it here I'm going to use this stuff.
Well, we've got something on it now, but the problem is I don't know if the actual pins from the, the thing's gone on there. Let's give it a clean up. The pins from the connection, I'm not sure if there are actually, whether I might have just got solder on the pad, but the pin might not be on it. It's just too small to see. I'm gonna have a little look through my microscope just to see if I can see anything different. I think that connection is actually okay. So now I'm pretty confident on the soldering on the ribbon cable and I'm confident with that connection there. So what we can do now is put solder mask on the ribbon cable, hopefully give it a little bit of strength. Then I'm gonna start reassembling, but basically I just need to wait until I get the battery and more importantly, until I get this thing here, because this is stopping me from actually doing anything at the moment, because I need to remove this one here. So I'm gonna be using some of this green solder mask here, and I'm just gonna be putting it onto my green mat and then just transferring it, firing it from there, just onto the bits that I've soldered. I've got the UV light here, I'm just going to rest it on here and let that go off for 10 minutes or so. I'm just waiting for the UV mask to go off so I might as well try and get rid of this charge port. The new one costs just under £3, UK pounds, and the battery costs just under £7, UK pounds, so just under £10 in total. Uh, if you add that onto the price of it, £20 plus £10, £30, Obviously, if you were to take your time into account, it would never be worthwhile doing this in the real world. But it certainly makes for an interesting video, I think, when you have a variety of different faults on it. So now to remove this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all melt some of this low melt solder onto it to try and lower the temperature. And then I'm going to use some hot air and then hopefully I won't burn everything else on the board. So this is just a chip quick stuff. Very rarely use this one. Uh, it is expensive, but certain times it comes... Uh, so at certain times it's useful and I think because we've got a few anchor points here I think this would be one of those examples where it would be useful. Now really I should be using a much bigger soldering tip but my iron's already hot so I'm just going to run with this for the moment try to get this in to the same solder as that there. So basically by mixing this low melt solder with the unleaded solder, you're going to reduce the temperature right down to much less than even leaded solder. So it means it will hopefully come off without a, a huge fight. And also it stays molten for a long time. So sometimes you can kind of do that and then the item will pop off itself because it's still staying molten. You don't have to keep the soldering iron on it constantly, even when you take it off. Right, watch this, take it off for a few seconds, but it will still hopefully be a little bit flexible. But the downside is it's just so expensive. I can't remember exactly how much I paid for it now, but I, I remember it being a lot of money. Can you see that bit came off already? Right, okay, so that's those outer two bits off now. So now I should be able to, uh, I don't even think I'm gonna need hot air for this. Oh, there's a couple of pads at the front here that I didn't see. Let's remove those ones. Now, do you see how easy that is there? Just using a soldering iron and no damage to the board. It is pretty amazing stuff. Well, I'm just gonna clean up these pads. Cleaned it up there, and although it's burnt, I can't actually see 
the pads for the middle two connections. You know the little two in the middle there that are now just hanging around there loose. They were going down onto the board here and I can't see no pads there. At the same time I can't see any pads that's been ripped up on the actual connections. Which is strange. I'm going to give it a clean. Maybe they've just got burnt. Oh, there they are. Yes, excellent. There we go. I'm really happy with how that's come out there. And it just shows you that was done with just a soldering iron. So yes, I had to be a little bit violent with the... Uh, tweezers taken it off but there's there's no damage there that's perfect right so I'm gonna uh, be putting it back together now it's gonna take quite a while really there's no point in filming it because you see me take care uh, pretty much all of it apart so now I'm just gonna pop some deoxit into the volume switch so it can work its magic and I'm just wiggling it up and down with the tweezers so it can really get in there now, when it comes to the screens the top and bottom screen are really scratched you can understand the bottom one because previous owner might have been a little bit heavy-handed with their stylus but the top one is equally as bad so I'm gonna try and use some poly watch on it poly watch is what you would use normally on a watch crystal a plastic one so you can it polishes out just minor scratches and scrapes so hopefully it might do something with the screens but I don't think any amount of polishing is gonna make them look good but hopefully it might make it look a little bit better Right, so I'm still waiting for the parts to arrive, but I'm just messing around with it. To begin with, it had trouble reading games, so I had to clean the game card again. And look, there's still no volume. Well, there is. It's just so hard to hear. But look, if I squeeze it, I then get volume. There. Sometimes. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to take this apart here. It's definitely a bad connection on here. The problem with water damage is there's just so much wrong with it. Uh, and uh, that's the issue. You're not dealing with one fault. You're dealing with multiple faults. So now I'm just opening up the actual switch itself because I've already tried cleaning it and it hasn't made any difference. So I just need to unhook the bits of metal from the edges there. And then what that will allow is it will allow the whole thing to fold over and then I can actually take, let's call it the runner, the actual bit that moves up and down. Now if you have a look at the bottom of that, those little contacts look quite flat. So all I'm doing is making them stick out more so they're more springy, so they make a good contact against the two tracks at the bottom. So while I'm here, I'm just cleaning up tracks just a tiny bit, but the main thing that looks wrong to me is just that it's gone flat, and I think it's just from being pushed in and in and in over all the years of use that they've just lost their spring so hopefully by pushing them back out again they will make a good contact with the copper and then it will the actual 3ds will be able to read the difference between when the volume is up middle and down there we go sorted fantastic So I have a range of control now. Okay, so I'm still going to use it, find out if there's anything else wrong with it. And then uh, when the little jack arrives to the back, we'll solder that in and hopefully we will be finished. A few days have passed now and my little port has arrived. So let's see if we can get this in. Right, I think I'd better change the camera angle because you won't be able to see anything there. It's hard to get a good angle because it's so small my hands are going to be in the way but what's slightly worrying is look all these end in a point they're not ending on a flat and yet there doesn't appear to be any holes in here you would expect there to be holes unless I missed them the other day is there holes here? no there's definitely no holes through the board so it looks like these are just going to be put in two lumps of solder so I don't think this is ever going to be a really strong connection unless of course I was sent the wrong one I definitely ordered the correct one 
But I do remember when the old ones came off, they looked like they ended in points as well. But I would have thought they would have been better if they had little feet on them, that they could sit nicely on the pads. Oh well, we'll put it on and we'll see what it's uh, see what it's like. So the only one I'm not really going to be able to get to are these two front ones here. So I'm going to add a little bit of solder in, and hopefully they might just uh, I might be able to get the iron in there at the end. I'm just going to put a bit of solder on each of the. Uh, well, I tell you what, let me start with one, and then that might kind of give it a bit of an anchor. There we go, that's in its place. So now I'm just going to solder up each of them. And then I'm just going to press down. Right now I'm just going to try to get to the two pads at the front. This is going to be off camera. Oh, you can get to them. Well, right, let's give it a clean up. To be fair, all the pads were accessible because to get to the front ones, you just have to put the solder line in this way here. There's actually quite a gap underneath it. Well, I won't know until it goes back together whether it's actually going to fit in the case or not, but if you have a look there, you can see the pads, two pads at the bottom here and here are done here and in here and now if I flip it around the other way you can see that these ones here are all done as well so I'm happy with that so now all I need to do is put it back together and let's see if it works my third party batteries arrived you can see the port there is pushing up about a millimeter so it did need to lie more flat on the board not sure what to do there maybe you had to bend the pin slightly yourself or maybe if I did it with a heat gun maybe I would have noticed that there was little holes but anyway it's okay it's only about a millimeter out uh, it appears to be charging I haven't tried this battery yet but uh, I'm not bothered about a millimeter there when there's just bashes and scrapes and the screens are awful anyway so really this was one that was probably not economical to repair but saying that it's still nice that it's that it's working again so i've tried all the features and they do appear to be okay so i was playing a bit of mario kart 7 and what's nice is you haven't got to pay pay for any online play so uh, if i open up there you will see it will come to life 3d's working as well if that's your thing so you can see hopefully you can see that right let's uh, plug it in and see if we have any see if it starts charging so you can see the light at the moment isn't charging. So plug it in at the back. Yay, and now it's charging. Let's give it a wiggle. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm happy with that. Right, okay, so let me uh, show you a bit of gameplay. So with the, uh, the 3DS games, sorry, the DS games work and also the 3DS games as well. So watch this. You can see their brain training. And let's do a little bit of Mario Kart 7 and also volume works as well. Actually, before I show you the game, I didn't show you the camera. So it's quite clever here. So you can actually calibrate the 3D part of it. So if you have a look here, I've uh, you can see the camera's taken a picture of that. And if I take a picture, and now I can make adjustments to that. So watch this now. Can you see I can move it around up and down and I can also move it right and left to get it to line up perfectly so it's quite uh, it's quite clever now you can see it's all lined up right now let's show you a little bit of Mario Kart 
Right, so now if you look closely at the top screen, you can still see a load of shadows around here. And when it goes to a white screen, it really is awful. So it's fight. There you go. Can you see? There's just marks absolutely everywhere. So it's all right when it's when you're playing. So it, do you know what? It's fully playable, but it's so far from perfect. And if you have a look, that's with the 3D on and put the 3D off. So that's all working. Right, OK, let's uh, show you this. So as far as gameplay and stuff goes, it's working perfectly. So you can see drifting around corners there. And I'll show you a power up now. So yeah, straight through the banana skin. There we have it, and volume as well. And home. So there we have it. What a fun little fix. Lots wrong with it, but fixable. Fixable, but took a huge amount of time to do it. But I think it's, uh, I think it's a good little system. How much did I spend on it? So I spent the £20 on this and £10 on parts, so £30 in total. And do you know what? Although it is a complete and utter mess, I think it probably is worth that £30. I had a look on eBay and some of them seem to go for around £70 upwards. So they're, uh, they're still quite expensive, even though they're getting old now. Oh, by the way, the uh, SD card works as well in there. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Massive thanks to all my Patreons and uh, my mate Vince Massive. Thanks to everybody that watches these videos. Yeah, take care. Hope you have a good day. Bye now. Mm -hmm.